Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> anyway, we did a little bit with trapezoids. Now we're gonna look at isosceles trapezoids. The special thing about isosceles trapezoids is, well, we know isosceles means they have two sides that are equal, and those sides in particular are the legs, which are the non-parallel sides. What does all that mean? Well, let's take a look. Over here you see your properties. Here's your four. Trapezoid, remember the consecutive angles between the bases are supplementary? That's a carryover. But then number two, your base angles are congruent. Number three, your legs are congruent. Number four, your diagonals are congruent. But step one, if you look, hasn't changed. Label the bases and the base angles. So let's look at number one. It says find angle F. F is what we're looking for. Before we do that, let's label our bases and our base angles. Now remember the bases are the parallel sides, which means this is a base and this is a base, which means your base angles are C, D, E, and F, right? Circle the property. Well, if we look at our property, it looks like C and F are both base angles and it says in an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are equal. That's property number two. So by property number two, we know that angle C is equal to angle F. Well, if angle C is 60, that's, that means angle F is 60. So your final answer for angle F is 60 degrees. Well, that's kind of convenient, Mr. Elizondo. Well, let's see number two. Number two says KM, which is this right here, equals 14. And they want us to find JL in the green. Well, we can still label our bases and our base angles, right? KL is a base. JM is a base. And which property is going to help us? Well. Which property has to do with diagonals? Number four. Number four says your diagonals are congruent. So in this case, they told us, they told us that KM is 14. So based on property four, we know that diagonal KM is equal to diagonal JL. Well, if KM is 14, what's JL? 14. So our final answer is JL equals 14. I know what you're thinking. Those are way too easy, Mr. Elizondo. Well, let's see some challenging problems. Now question four, we have to find angle R, which is this angle right here. So they gave us angle Q is 6x minus 22, and angle R is 8x plus 34. We have to figure out what the relationship is between those two. Well, let's figure out what our bases are, it'd be QT and RS, right? Those are our bases, which means R and Q are base angles, but they're not base angles for the same base. Whoa, let's think about that for a second. You can see angle R is a base for that line RS, and angle Q is a base for our side QT, but they're not base angles for the same base, so you can't use number two. I know that's what I was thinking, right? But if you think about rule number one, it says, hey, consecutive angles between bases are supplementary. Consecutive means next to, so by number one I know that if I do six X, or excuse me, before we even write that, let's write the whole thing out. Let's write angle Q, plus angle R is going to equal 180 degrees, right? If you just look at it and you can see. So from there, we just plug in what we have for Q and R. So Q is 6X minus 22 plus angle R is 8X plus 34. That's equal to 180. So combine our like terms. So that's 14x. When you combine the negative 22 and the 34, you get plus 12. That equals 180 minus 12. We're going to get 14x equals 168. And when I divide that out, I get, oh, I think I get 7. Does that sound right? 
770? No, it's way more than seven. Hold on just a second. I don't know why I said seven. I meant 12. Even Mr. Elizondo makes mistakes sometimes. It's very rare, far and few between. But anyway, so that's what, so are we done? Technically not, right? Because we only found that X is 12. To find angle R, you gotta plug the 12 in for X. Which I'm gonna trust that by now going through this unit, you can do that on your own. But what, I'll do it for you anyway, just because I love you. 96 plus 34 is gonna be 130. So there's that one. Let's look at numero cinco. Number five says determine the value of x. So once again, we know our bases are sp, and our base here is rq. Now this time, all right, we don't have any diagonals, so we know it's not four. We're not. We're dealing with angles, not sides. So it's not three. And they're both base angles, but they're not on a base. They're on the same base, excuse me. So that's not going to work either. So we're going to have to use something with number one again. But wait a minute. Why did I cross out two? Two can still help us. If this is 51, what's angle P? It's 51 also, right? So by rule number two, we can say, hey, angle S is equal to angle P because they're both base angles. If S is 51, that means P is 51. I don't know what you're thinking. Mr. Elizondo, how's that going to help me? Look at this example. It's almost the exact same thing. They're consecutive. Up here we said they're supplementary. What do you think is going to happen here? You got it. By rule number one, they're supplementary. So we can write that angle P plus angle Q is going to give us 180 degrees because they're supplementary. So like we did before, we just Plug it in. Angle P is 51. Angle Q is 28X minus 11. That equals 180. So we combine our like terms. We get 40 plus 28X equals 180. Subtract 40, subtract 40. 28X equals 140. Divide by 28, divide by 28. And the answer that we get is drum roll, five. So x is five. Go back to the question. They told you to find the value of x, so our final answer, x equals five. So right there you saw us using a combination of two of our properties, right? We used number two to get us to a point where we could actually solve for x. We used property two, and then we used property one. Now this last problem is supposed to be a doozy, but trust me, it's not that bad at all. It says that AD, which is a diagonal, is 12x minus 11, and BC, which is a diagonal, is 9x minus 2. It says find the value of x so that ABCD is isosceles. Well, what's it say for our properties? In order for it to be an isosceles trapezoid, our diagonals have to be congruent. So this problem, while it might look confusing, is actually really easy. By property four, all we have to say is, hey, AD is equal to BC. AD is 12X minus 11, and BC is 9X minus two. So from this point, we're gonna get all of our like terms on one side. So we'll subtract 9X, and you're gonna get 3X minus 11 equals a negative Two. Then we're gonna add by 11, add by 11. I'll finish it over here. Three X is gonna equal nine. Get X by itself, we end up with X equals, oh, what happened here? I'll write it up here. X equals three. So they want us to find the value of X? Well, I'll write it again so it's nice and neat. So once again, with these problems, sometimes you'll combine, sometimes they're straightforward. I think you're all going to do great. And hey, you've almost finished the unit. Stay strong. Don't give up now.